I'm James White, and you're watching Play Unplugged TV. Hey folks, Enrico Nardini from PlayUnplugged.com, and I'm here with Laura Tomovic. Yes from Wizards of the Coast, and we're going to talk about some of the new and exciting things that are going on with Wizards uh, and, and with Gen at Gen Con 2011, including the release of Neverwinter, which is the big new D&D &D push. Yes, it is. We're all about Neverwinter here at Gen Con and through the remainder of the year. We have a whole portfolio of products, in-store play offerings and promotions, all centered around the legendary city of Neverwinter. Now, for those who don't know, Neverwinter is a city in the Forgotten Realms. It's located above Waterdeep. It's um, it was actually saved from the from the spell. Um, oh man, spell plague. thank you. Say yeah. it again. It's it, the spell plague. It actually has a really interesting history. As you mentioned, it's up in the north uh, northwest corner of Faerun, of the continent of Faerun, where it's actually pretty cold. But Neverwinter, per its name, it's never winter there because it has fire elementals that are under a volcano there that heat the water that flows through the main river through the city. Mm -hmm. So it's actually warm all the time in Neverwinter, even in this cold region, uh, this cold part of Faerun. So it's really, really interesting. And then to your point, it, it was struck by the spell plague. It began to be rebuilt by the people. And then unfortunately they had another catastrophic event. Volcano. The ruining, yes, the volcano. So the current state of Neverwinter is it's being rebuilt. It's in the process of being rebuilt back to its original glory. Mm. And the challenge is, is that you have all these various factions with their own motivations who are really, really vying for power and glory in the city right now. Now, I just played in a game with James Wyatt, who, who was one of the help, one of the writers, and um, that was a really awesome experience. And one of the cool things that he pointed out, and I think this is a really uh, feather in the cap for Wizards, is that they, they presented these themes that are going to try to draw your character into the setting, into the campaign setting. So your character might have a background that attaches them to a political faction or yeah, something or, like that. Or nobility or something. Um, so yes, you have those character themes in the campaign setting, and the book really is an all, all comprehensive a book on everything you need to know about the city and this is really one of the deepest dives we've ever done into one individual city within a setting and provided so much detail on the people that reside there the types of mon monsters you'll encounter encounter the geography the history the character themes as you mentioned so it's a great product for both players and DMs no it's kind of interesting so like there, there was the Dark Sun release and that was more global but then Shadowfell came out and that was even though it was in like a whole nother setting in the same way that Dark Sun is you know like a whole nother plane that really went, was a distillation down into a city. It was because it was really focused on gloom rot. In the same way, this is a Fey Run setting, but it's not really focused on Fey Run the whole. It's focused on this city. Is that um, is that kind of a new direction that you guys are focusing on, like go, trying to get more detailed and smaller? We're definitely focusing a lot on story, and what our goal is to provide, what our goal is, is to provide shared experiences for all D&D &D fans, or even fa any fantasy enthusiasts, really, using story as that connective tissue. So yes, we're taking a deep dive into a specific location, and then providing multiple ways for people to experience it on multiple platforms and in multiple product categories. So if you look at Neverwinter, we have a whole suite of products that all really plug into that story and, and tell in their own individual way, so that regardless of how you want to participate, there's a way for you to do that, whether it's RPG gameplay, board gameplay, comic books, novels, there's digital offerings, there's really something for everybody in store play programs as well. Uh, you know, you just gave me a great segue. Um, Neverwinter at the is going is also now it's the the, the old the um the Shadowfell uh, in store play events just ended and we're transitioning into Neverwinter and uh, James Wyatt had said there's going to be a much stronger focus in the adventures on uh, on the role playing aspect versus a, a more combat encounters uh, version of the game um, how how did Wizards make that transition. Well, it's a subtle shift. Um, you know, we all, we do have the themes with the Neverwinter campaign setting, so that naturally sort of encourages people to think more about, you know, the role and the the, the hero that they're playing. Um, so yeah, we are seeing that. And, and to your point, um, the encounter season is shifting from the Dark Legacy of Ivard. I'm glad that you are aware of that. And we're possibly playing. Um, we do shift into our new uh, Lost Crown of Neverwinter encounter season, that starts on August 10th. Um, in fact, we have a game day happening this weekend on August 6th here at Gen Con and in stores across the country. People can actually take their characters from the game day that's running this weekend and use that character in the new encounter season. 
So we have great continuity there as well, and I think it's fun for people to be able to, to take their character and move with them into a new program. Yeah, and I, I think that's, I, I think it really is, it's one of those things that like makes you, it you gets you invested in the game because yeah. that person becomes, you know, it becomes an avatar of you. Absolutely, you've put more time and energy and thought into it, and, and there's more meaning for you. Of course, people can just jump in too, there are tons of pre-gens. They can jump right in. That's the beauty of the D&D Encounters program. It's for players of all level. Um, if you don't have the time to roll up a, a character you know, prior to, to dropping in on a retail location, or you're brand new, not a problem. You can get a pre-generated character. Um, that program runs on every Wednesday night in the, in the locations that are participating. So the beauty of it is you know there's going to be a community of players waiting for you. Um, you don't have to play every single week. You can, you know, drop in and out. There is a big overarching story, uh, but you can complete, you know, that self-contained encounter on one Wednesday night if you like, if you're, if you have some time constraints. Now, also with the in-store events, for those of the more tactically minded, I, I, when I was at D&D XP 2011, they had mentioned this, and, and at that point it wasn't named, and I know it's named now, but it's I, named. I, it's, it's it's popped out of my it's head, named. but there is an actual, a super tactical encounter version of the of the game that's going on. Do you want to yes. talk about that for a minute? Absolutely. That's also associated with our big uh, Neverwinter um, portfolio is we have a new program that's starting in September. It's called Lair Assault. That's right. D&D Lair Assault. And as the name probably indicates, it is highly tactical, highly challenging. This is going to be one of those great programs for players that like to really min-max their characters, that like to strategize, you know, going into it like to work very closely with their adventuring party to figure out, you know, what their strategy is going to be. Um, it's going to have a slightly more adversarial role between the DMs and players than what you'll find in Encounters, which I think people are really looking forward to. Um, we think people are going to want to play the challenges multiple times because they may not fare so well the first time and, you know, maybe go back and strategize with their group. And we're also highly recommending that people uh, look at using those fortune cards, uh, the Neverwinter fortune cards in the Lair Assault Challenge because we think they're going to need them. Yeah, I've heard that, uh, that, you know, I mean, this is an encounter where you're going in with all your stuff. You've got your action point, you've got your dailies. And so it's, <laughs> you know, they're designed knowing that you're going in with all that power. So. Absolutely. It's, it's pretty serious. It's very serious. That's, that's pretty awesome. Um, also, D&D's made recently, you know, within the, within, within the last year, year and a half, they, this, they've done a lot of these board games. And, like, for example, Castle Ravenloft is a phenomenal board game. Um, where, where do you see what Wizards going with that? Is that going to continue past the uh, Legend of Dritz? So board games are definitely a current initiative of ours. We've seen a fantastic response to the board games, um, which is so exciting for us. We, our goal is to provide new ways for people to engage with the brand. And the board games, I think, have been so well, well received because they have a feel of RPG play, all self-contained in this box, um, which is a, a great way to experience D&D. There's some familiarity there with RPG play. Um, and it's a cooperative experience, which is so unique. Um, basically, these board games are part of our adventure system games. Um, as you mentioned, there was Castle Ravenloft, Wrath of a Shardalon, Legend of Dritzt is coming out in October. It contains some scenarios based in Neverwinter. And yes, it is our plan to continue to do board games, and um, we love providing new ways for people to experience the brand. Those three games are actually all playable together, which is fantastic. You can use the parts to expand it out. And specifically in Legend of Dritzt, you can play Dritzt and his adventuring companions for the first time. And, and you can swap those characters out, right? With any of the any you could you could play you could play Dritz in the Wrath of a Shardlon. Yeah, tiles, it's it's modular, but it's it's a great um, cooperative system um, where people are working with their adventuring party to solve whatever you know challenge that they're tasked with. That sounds awesome. That sounds totally great. Yeah. Um, and also another board game, uh, Conquest of Narath. Now this is a totally different focus. So un unlike giving a board game D and D experience, this is actually more like a tabletop war game board game, like a almost like a, like a, any of the big conquest war games uh, you yes. you think like Risk, things like that. It is. It's more of a territory management game. Um, fantastic gameplay experience. And again, that is about providing new ways for people to engage with the brand. It's a little bit different play style, as you mentioned, and it's giving people those options. You know, whether they're D&D players that also like those types of board games, or if they're, you know, people maybe new to D&D who also enjoy that style of play, and now they're experiencing it in the Dungeons & Dragons world. Sounds awesome. Um, now, Dark Sun, Shadowfell, into Neverwinter. Are we gonna be taking any trips back to those other settings? 
you're going to have to wait and see. Uh, we've got lots of exciting things planned for next year. I think what you can look forward to is seeing uh, the way that we have all the continuity between all the product offerings now and Story with Neverwinter. You know, our goal is to be able to provide that going forward so that, again, people have those shared experiences through the story. Um, speaking of story, there's a big part of our Neverwinter campaign we haven't discussed yet, which are the novels. Oh, yeah, go ahead. We've got some, as I'm sure many of your viewers know, uh, R.A. Salvatore is a New York Times bestselling author, and the second book in his Neverwinter saga comes out this October. It's called Neverwinter. It's a continuation of the trilogy that launched with Gonzo Grimm last year. Mm -hmm. And the exciting part is that this will be the first time that the legendary character Dritz will be adventuring in the city of Neverwinter. So we're really excited about that. R.A. Salvatore is here at Gen Con um, playing, playing the legend of Dritz and doing book signings. So it's just a, a fantastic part, a very, very fantastic part of our portfolio. Yeah, I think that will probably excite a lot of readers because there isn't really a character more iconically, you know, there are very few characters more iconically linked now with the Dungeon Dragons brand than Dritz. Than Dritz, this is true. And people will also be able to experience Dritz through a comic miniseries that R.A. Salvatore has co-written with his son Gino. Um, in a new uh, comic miniseries that's coming out in August called The Legend of Dritz Neverwinter Tales. And that's being published by our partners over at IDW Publishing. And so we're uh, very, very much looking forward to that as well. So in closing, are there any special spoilers you could give Play Unplugged viewers? Anything coming out that we, that... Uh, that you could even give a hint at that, that that's maybe on the on the back burner but is coming out soon? I think maybe just keep your eye open um, at early next year when we start talking about what our focus is going to be. Again, it will be a big campaign like this one, and I think that it, it will be focused on a, a subject matter that I think a lot of people are very interested in, and I don't want to spoil any more than that. Well, you've, now, you've got, now you've wet my appetite. I know. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Laura, thank you so much for the interview. Thank it was wonderful. A lot of great information. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. You too. Thank you.